Good evening, um, Caroline Whitehorn, Stone, the Stonehenge osteopath. Uh, just bear with me a moment while I just set things up on my laptop so I get everything a bit smooth. Oh. Don't forget your tins. I think everybody must be watching something online. My thing's gone very slow. Hello, Valerie. <laughs> oh, I've done that. Right, are you ready? Won't be a minute. I just do all the little bits my brother tells me to do as we get started. Have you got your tins? Right. Oops. I don't know what I pressed there. Don't think I should have pressed whatever I just did. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Bear with me. Right. Hi. Um, it's Caroline Whitehorn, the Stonehenge osteopath, um, with you again, five o'clock tonight, just for future reference, because my mother-in-law pointed out that she watches the government... Um, update at five o'clock every day so I'm going to move from Tuesday onwards to 5 30 so hopefully that's a bit more convenient for people um, so from Tuesday onwards instead of 5 p.m it will be 5 30 and we will do this session um, so today I need your tins of beans your sturdy worktop and or a dining room chair that's a bit stable for you um, and we will get on with a routine. This is aimed at people who, um, a slightly older population, to maintain balance, strength, flexibility, and hopefully a sense of goodwill and that you've moved about a bit. Um, so let's get started. I'm just gonna move the chair out of the way, just check the camera's at the right position, because I've been dealing with a pop-up camp house I don't know if you've all had the same thing going on or neighbours or family around you. Okay, so starting, we're going to just start with a um, snow globe. So you're starting in a glass ball, paint on your fingertips, and you're going to cover the glass ball with paint. Your eyes are going to follow your hand. If you are comfortable doing head, um, arm over head, then carry on, and you're just making your way down to your side. If that range of movement is painful or uncomfortable and has been for a while, then and you find 90 degrees or shoulder height is more comfortable, then do that instead. None of these exercises are designed to cause you any pain um, and they shouldn't provoke any symptoms. So we're going to do that the other side. So if you're happy overhead, then do that. If you get a bit of discomfort and you'd rather be um, shoulder height, then do that instead. Okay, so these exercises should never provoke any symptoms, shouldn't put you in more pain than you were already in if you have get if you get discomfort. Um, they should make you hopefully feel a bit freer, a bit more mobile for a period of time, um, and just make you feel a little bit more stronger and stable. So next exercise is figure of eight. So you're gonna put your fingertips either side of your spine as close as you can towards the front of figure of eight with your elbows in the air. So that gets your upper back moving lovely. This is a really nice activity or movement. So if you can see what's going on with my thoracic spine, there's a lot of extension, side bending as I'm making that number with in the air. And this is just an antidote to all what we do every day. Everything's pulled in front of us. We sat at a desk, sat at laptops, on our phones, just opens up and gets things moving. So lastly, we're just going to do cervical spine range of movement. So take your, you may find you're a bit stiff in some 
ranges. So commonly with the neck, as we get older, that stiffens up a little bit. So don't go to the point of pain. Take it to the point where you think, oh, well, that's okay, I don't want to go any further. And just hold it there. Breathe a few times. And then go through the range to the other side. Commonly you'll find one side a bit stiffer than the other. That's not unusual. You might get a little popping, clicking, lots of noises going on. As long as they're not painful, that shouldn't be anything particularly to worry about. These symptoms should not bring on any arm pain. These, these, these activities shouldn't bring any arm pain on, shouldn't give you any pins and needles or anything into your hands. If you get symptoms like that, then um, you're very welcome to contact me at, on my email address, info at stonehengeosteopath.co.uk and ask me about them and I'll do the best I can over email or a video call or something and see what I can do to help. If you're particularly concerned, then obviously give your GP a ring. I know what you can get a hold of at the moment. So um, we're now moving back to the worktop. So nice stable work surface. Um, feet as far away as you're comfortable. Do not work too hard. Be quite close. And you're just pushing your body weight away, keeping your body rigid, but you're using your arms. So that will be a little bit of... Um, movement through your triceps. If you feel pretty strong and stable and you're confident, then move your feet away a little bit. Again, you want your body taut, so a little bit of tension through your lower abs, bottom a little bit tight, just so that you don't collapse through the middle when you're pushing away from the worktop. So feet away from the worktop, and you would aim to do 10. I think that's four. So this is the strengthening part of the workout. I think that's eight, nine, ten. So we're working a little bit on this session with upper body. Um, then we, the next time, the next thing we need is a chair. You can do the sitting or standing. If you'd rather be sat challenge yourself a little bit. I don't need you in lots of pain, but let's get you working a little bit harder. So you're very welcome to do it without weights if you prefer. So just do fists and you're just going to do um, a shoulder press action. So you're bringing your arms up to meet above your head. If you don't like overhead, then just bring your arms up to the side to the level at which it doesn't hurt. If you're happy to do it with the beans, I've got chickpeas and rice pudding, very weird because the chickpeas is a bit sloppy. Um, bringing your beans, your tins above your head and you're aiming to do 10, so you carry on doing those if that's a comfortable movement for you. So that's five, I think. Um, if you don't like overhead, then just bring the beans up to about shoulder height or whatever range of movement is comfortable for you. Don't need you to be in pain doing any of these activities. Make sure your hand positions, your thumbs are pointing to the ceiling. So you're coming up to the side with your thumbs pointing up. Okay. Lawrence, I hope you're joining in and not just watching. Okay, so that's shoulder. I think you shoulder press people should be almost finished your 10. So again, so another front of arms, front of the chest, this is gonna work. So you're gonna just lift your arms up in front of you with or without your beans. So you just bring your arms up in front, not just to shoulder height, you're not going above shoulder height. So if you like that exercise and that's not too painful, keep going. A little bit of tension through your lower abs. Um, I'm gonna carry on with the beans. So, or tins. Okay, so we're aiming for 10. Obviously, what you can do, if you feel like you want to have a go with the tins, but you're not comfortable doing 10 to start with, then do the first three or four without the, with the beans, and then put them to one side and carry on without the beans. So now we're going to take our arms out to the side. So without beans, make sure your thumbs are pointing up. So the people who would have been doing this instead of the shoulder press, you get a um, double dose. This is good, isn't it? If you want to carry on with your beans, make sure your thumbs are pointing up so the beans are going out to the side and up. So you're doing that. Okay. And like I said, if you feel that 10 with beans, tins are too much, or any weight, whatever weight you're using, you might have some dumbbells and be doing it with that. Put the beans to one side after three or four repetitions and carry on without if you can't do it with the weights all the way through. Okay, so lifting your arms, that's 
10, I think. Okay, so that's the lateral raise, and we're going to put the beans, beans to one side. I'm going to move the chair to one side so you can see what I'm doing. Work top, nice stable surface, stand side on if you want, or face the worktop if you prefer to have both hands in touch with the work surface. I'm standing side on so you can see what I'm doing with my leg. So you're going to take your leg out to the side and slightly behind you. So you're really working your buttock muscles and you're holding your lower tummy in a little bit tight. Your upper body shouldn't be doing anything. So you're not doing this. That's a whole different exercise. You're doing that. Okay, so we're aiming for 10. If you're doing this without me on other days, then do do more than 10. I'm just keeping it to 10 to try and keep the whole session below sort of 20 minutes if I can. But you can build up, make circuits, do 10 repetitions of each, move on, do it again, or go through the set again. So you're building up towards 20 or 30 of each. So changing legs, side on, balance if you need it, taking your foot slightly behind you, working this muscle through your hip. Six, seven, tight through there, 10. Okay, so that's working through your back of your hips. That helps often with any low grade lateral hip pain that you might get. Often what we find with um, getting older, but we have to work hard to maintain the same level of strength. Often you get aches and pains around the hips and people get a bit concerned what it is. Often it's just a weakness through those muscle groups that just need to be checked and built up again. So we've done leg raises, uh, leg abductions. We do some heel raises. So you can start off two feet together, both feet on the floor doing your heel raises. I would suggest if you feel like you need to do, keep both feet on the floor, do that for five. And then if you feel stable and finish the 10 on one foot and then change feet and do five on the other foot. Three, four, five. If you need to, do carry on, do the double with both feet. So you can do both and then one foot and then the other, but it's just trying to push yourself a little bit to require a little bit more of your body and keep you strong. Okay, I'm just going to... So we're doing gun dog pose. So you're on all fours and you're doing opposite arm to opposite leg. If opposite arm to opposite leg is too much, just do the leg. Again, it's about working those glutes and the muscles through the low back and keeping you strong through your pelvis. So if you're doing 10 and you want to start off with um, just legs, do that. If you're ready to bring arms in, bring arms in. Put the chair in a silly place. So opposite arms, opposite legs. You can do this on a bed if you're not comfortable getting on and off the floor. And you'll feel a little bit vulnerable possibly, and that's when you can always have three points in contact with the floor. It's probably actually quite hard on a bed because of the bouncing or the unstable surface. So you may find on a bed you do want three points on the floor. I think that's four, five, six. The good thing about bringing your arm in is it gets your upper body working to balance your lower body. I think it's nine, ten. Okay, well done. Standing up again if you're comfortable to be stood. Um, we're going to do some stretches. So, actually I don't want to be stood. We sat down, lying down again. What am I doing? Wake up. So lie on your back, on your um, bed or on the floor. You're just bringing your knees up to your chest and stretching out your low back. You might want your knees behind your thighs rather than over your knees. If you get some discomfort through the knees, have your hands behind your thighs. Just holding that for a few breaths, about 20 seconds. And let your back relax. And then put your feet to the floor. Let your hips roll and your knees drop to the side. Stick your arms out straight either side of you. And then have your head facing away from your knees. So you'll feel a bit of a stretch through the low back. Like I said to you earlier, none of these exercises can change sides should bring you any discomfort, they should not provoke any symptoms you're not used to. 
um, or, or they should bring it, provoke any symptoms. If they do, we need to have a look at what you're doing and how you're doing it. Bring your knees up. So um, knee roll, that's knee hugs and knee rolls. We can do pelvic tilt. We're going to start to do this this week, sitting on a chair. Next week, we'll move to lying down and doing it just because it makes you have to work those muscles up a little bit more. So sitting tall, pelvic tilt, you're going to just roll your hips back so you're in a bit of a slump position. Come to neutral, which is sitting tall, and then arching your back. So you're then rolling your hips right forward. So you've got an arch in your back forward. And come back to neutral, roll, hold, come back to neutral, and arch your back. So that wakes up low back and gets things moving a little bit. I think my signal keeps coming and going. So this exercise can often feel a little bit uncomfortable. Um, warm up, it gets more comfortable. So you might feel a little bit tight in a slump position or that you're compressing things when you're in the arch position then as your back gets used to it, often that eases. But again, you're not going into levels of pain. It should just be a little bit of awareness, nothing particularly uncomfortable, okay? So that's pelvic tilts. All these stretches you're gonna hold for um, 15, 20, 25 seconds, whatever you've got time for. So we're gonna stretch calf muscles out. You may want the back of the chair for this actually. If you do, your hands on the back of the chair, stick one leg out behind you, push that back heel into the floor and keep the knee straight. And what you should feel is a bit of a tension, a bit of stretch through there. This is often a very good stretch to have been doing your daily exercise. You've had a long walk. This is a nice stretch to do following that, just to stretch out the lower legs and let the muscle relax. Okay, so that's your calf stretch. Again, you're going to hold for 15 to 25 seconds. It just allows the brain to realise you're holding the muscle in a stretch position for a length of time and lets it relax. You can do it against the back of a chair, worktop or wall if you want to. Heel should be pressing into the floor and knee, back knee should be straight. Okay, finally going to do chest stretch. So hands on your bottom, you're bringing your elbows back stable, have your legs a bit staggered like you would for the calf stretch, one foot in front of the other, hip width apart, so you stood like that. And you should feel a little bit of a stretch through the front, you're just opening up your chest. If that's quite um, easy, you don't particularly feel anything, leap your fingers together and really bring your shoulders back. That should help you feel it if you're not feeling it much with your hands on your bottom. Okay? Lastly, we're going to look at balance. At the moment we're just doing two challenges for the balance. We stand firstly on one leg, use the support if you want it, if you entirely want the support, have your toe, your other foot toe resting on the floor while you have your weight on a flat foot, fingers on the worktop or back of the chair. If you rather have a little bit more challenge, lift that foot up and just have your fingers lightly rest on the back of the chair. If you want more challenge, take your hands off the back of the chair. Hips need to be level, okay? So change feet, again, rest your toe on the floor, just know where your work surface is or your back of your chair. If that's easy, bring your foot up and then you can take your hand off. You may find you just wanna check every time if you get a bit wobbly, just put your hand back. This is quite a nice activity to do when you're cleaning your teeth because you've got the kitchen, or the kitchen, bathroom facing in front of you. You can have your hand there, clean your teeth, waiting, let test it, clean your teeth and you've got to spend two minutes, so you might as well do it, do something with those two minutes. So that's the first balance exercise. The second one is a little bit more demanding. So standing on one leg for any period of time can be quite uncomfortable around the hip. When um, you get stronger, so as you're standing on one leg, if you need to engage your buttocks, so you hold your gluteal muscles tight, do that. So that may help you feel a bit more supported through your hip and allow you to keep your pelvis straight. This exercise helps you strengthen those muscles. So if your leg is in, is, your foot is off the floor and you're holding onto the worktop or the back of the chair, let your hip slop to the side. So drop your hip down and then pull yourself up with this muscle. So you're doing this action. Oops, I'm losing your balance. So pulling your leg up, use the, stair, the chair for balance if you need to. There you go. And then you change sides. 
Try not to use that too much, just have it so you know it's there. As it gets your feet muscles really working really hard because it's trying to read where your body is in space, it's trying to keep you balanced and it works all the pelvic muscles, which helps with strength, is the theory, um, and maintain your strength and fitness for when we're all released into the wild again and able to get out and do what we want to do. If you have any questions or queries, please email me, info at stonehengeosteopath.co.uk. I'm very happy to hear from you about comments, feedback, um, or any questions you have, personal questions about your own injuries or discomfort that you might have, and I'll see what I can do to help. Um, but and don't forget to like and share my Take care.